welcome back to Beer for Breakfast ABV. I am Danielle from Marty and Danielle in the morning on 91X. As always, my beer drinking partner in crime with me, Brewmaster Paul Segura of Carl Strauss, is here. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Prost. Prost. And we have Mo, the owner, Cheers. head brewer, founder, janitor, all around guy, hop, hop grower, gardener. does all of these things from Deft Brewing. Welcome, Mo. Thank this is your you. first Thank time you. of Beer for Breakfast. It is, it is. Great I'm to honored. have you, man. I'm, I'm definitely honored to be here. And congratulations on your recent medal at the Great American Beer Festival. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, very well earned. Oh, thank you. It was uh, it was exciting. It was totally unexpected. But uh, Were we, you there? We, I, w I was not. I was actually not even watching the ceremony. I mean, that's... Uh, it's not your fault. I mean, no, no offense, and... GABF, but your connection really sucked for oh. the award. So I, too, did not get to watch the oh, award. Yeah. So you weren't alone on that I one. Got, I got a text from, from a friend in the industry who just said, congratulations. And I'm like, for what? <laughs> so it was, it was good. That is amazing. Well, I kind of managed to watch. <laughs> Well, yeah, you were there. I was there. Mm -hmm. Humble brag, I'm a GABF judge. I was at GABF, but nobody else could go. I mean, uh -huh. yeah, I'm kind of bragging. <laughs> um, but you should. I haven't while we're there. on the topic, congrats to all the San Diego yes. Brewers out there that won 18 medals. medals. 18 medals. Wow. Including yours. Yes. Thank uh, you very much. Cheers, cheers to, to all of you and cheers, cheers to San Diego beer. Well, yeah. Mo, what is uh, this delicious beer we have in our glass right now? So this is the Austere Abbott. This is one of our original. We started with eight beers. One of our originals. Uh, we really focus on uh, beer styles from three different regions: um, Belgium, Germany, and uh, the British Isles. And so the Belgian representation started with the single and the Belgian triple, and then it's since expanded. Mm. We've, we've got a nice double. We've got a nice quad. We do saisons. We do all sorts of different things. This one is is like the OG, and it's it's just a nice, light, drinkable. Belgian style, you get the, the Belgian phenolics mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's got a lot of flavor to it, but it's still nice and refreshing. And mm. the story behind the, um, the singles are that the, the, the abbots or the, uh, the monks who would brew all these amazingly strong, complex beers would, uh, they couldn't drink their own stuff because it was because of austerity measures or whatever, yeah. but and they were getting in, white girl wasted. But hey, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think also unless it was Lent, then they can drink the big heavy stuff. Probably, right? yeah, <clears throat> probably. But but I think in general, um, and and certainly back in the day, that was one of the more sanitary things you could drink was beer. So they they'd have yep. it's always safer than uh, water. They've got they had tamed down versions, and this is essentially a tamed down version of of their amazing triples, let's say, mm. for, for yeah. instance. So. I love singles, always have. I love mm. the lighter ones, like the grisettes and stuff, too, mm -hmm. um, which are like lighter saisons. This one, to me, is very complex. It, I mean, for being as light as it is, um, you get the phenolic up front in the nose, and then you get it slightly in the flavor, but it also has this really nice citrusy component that's there and then it finishes mm -hmm. just nice and dry and leaves you wanting another mm -hmm. sip. I think it's really great because you know you're talking all the complexity and all of the layers but also if you're not really sure like what is this Belgian beer what you know I don't really know if I like Belgian beers I think this is a perfect one to start with. Yeah. This is definitely a gateway and we get a lot of folks who are they come in intrigued by well first of all they're kind of shocked that they don't see a, a ton of IPAs or yeah. double IPAs or triple IPAs. Yeah. Um, which we always have a couple of IPAs on tap, but my my goal, my my mission is to um, ensure that we have a, a really good, solid, balanced lineup of some of these other styles from around mm -hmm. Europe, and um, and so I'm glad you said that, and I'll speak on behalf of a lot of beer nerds and brewers around San Diego um, that are I'm not going to say burnt out on IPAs, but everywhere we go, and and it's nice to go back to the classics. Mm -hmm. Um, Belgian, English, and German beers that nobody else is making, yeah. right? And it's some of these styles, I think, if we keep going on this course, they're going to be just gone and forgotten about. Um, ESBs, beers mm -hmm. like that, it's just, you know, it's what a shame. There's such great beers. And there's so much flavor in those. And I love <laughs> hops, and occasionally I'll... Our, our beer board, our, our menu is representative of my taste. So when I go out to other uh, tasting rooms or, or bars or restaurants, maybe 10, 15 percent of the time I'm seeking out a, a good hoppy IPA. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the yeah. time I'm looking for those interesting styles, you know, like right. I'd like to see their representation on a, 
on a Belgian beer or, right. you know, maybe a, a bitter, a British bitter or something. So. Well, yeah. for me personally, you know, I've told the story before, but I got into craft beer because of Belgians. You know, I moved to San Diego. I didn't understand what this whole, you know, IPA, super bitter beer. I was just like, I don't understand why anybody would enjoy this. And went into a uh, beer bar that is no longer around anymore and um, told them, look, I don't get, I don't understand this beer thing. Why are you guys about it? And we're talking and stuff. He puts a delirium tremens in front of me mm. and says, try this. And you tell me that you don't like craft beer. And I was like, this guy doesn't know what you're talking about. And I drank it and it's like the heavens opened. And it was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, craft beer doesn't have to be a light fizzy thing. And it also doesn't have to be this insanely aggressive hoppy IPA. It can be this also. Right. Absolutely, yeah. I think what a lot of people don't realize is that there's more different types of beer than there are wine, right? And when mm -hmm. you meet people that say, I just don't like beer or whatever, you, no, that can't be. You just haven't had the right one for you yet. There's a beer out there for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but what I like about your place is I can go in and find what are now more esoteric styles of beer, um, but that really shouldn't be. They were once very popular types of beer. Ooh, looks like we got a good dark Oh, one. yes. Well, as Mo said, uh, Deft Brewing is three different regions. We started with Belgian. Now we're moving on to English. Yep, British Excellent. Isles, yeah. is this what a is this? Dark mild or this, uh, this is actually a porter, an English porter. Excellent. Mm, 6%. Woohoo. Nice. Haven't had one of these in a while either. Yeah. And so you get mm. you get the, the nice um, cocoa complexity. You get the, the roastiness. You get some of the cocoa, the chocolate, some coffee in here. But it's... Oh Still gosh. fairly light and drinkable. Mm -hmm. It's not that you know thick uh, oh. syrup. You can tell by the color that it's not going to be a big, robust one. Mm -hmm. um, but I also wouldn't it get might scared be a nut by brown. this color. Like you know, some might say like, "Oh my gosh, that's so dark! I can't drink a dark beer like that." And mm. I, it doesn't taste like a dark wow. beer. It doesn't. Mm. In fact, it it kind of straddles that that fence between the nut brown ale and a yeah. mild porter, yep. right? I'd agree yeah. with that. Mm -hmm. yep. It's got really nice toastiness, nuttiness. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Very nice beer. Thank you. So Mo, in a city full of IPA heavy breweries, where did you get the idea to open up Deft? Were you like over in Belgium and England and all of that? How, how did we come here? Um, well, so my father is actually European, uh, born in, um, uh, born in Serbia, but German-speaking, German community. Um, so I, I kind of got into my, my blood. My mother's Colombian, actually. So so I'm I'm a, wow. I'm a oh, mutt, yeah. a wonderful yeah. mutt, you know? uh, and I and I'm very proud of it. Um, and so uh, yeah, I um, I have the European in my blood. I think it goes back to really college, uh, where all my buddies were drinking all the. You know the the, the swill, I guess mm -hmm. that would the, the the cheap swill would, that college students drink. And yep. Yep. I had a couple. You can get a twenty five pack for like five dollars. Oh, yeah, That's totally. Crazy. I mean, Natty <laughs> like. I drink, I drink my share of that too, uh -huh. but we all start somewhere. I had a couple of friends, uh, good friends, who were German majors, and they got me into German imported beers, and that really kind of introduced me. And I'll be honest with you, I'm late to the party in terms of craft beer, American craft beer, because I was really in on. I would seek out the European, like. Uh, Belgian pub or mm -hmm. a, a British pub or something, and I'd, I'd go for all the, the import beers. And then I uh, eventually kind of got, got into uh, craft beer, and I, I, actually Carl Strauss was probably the first one. Red Trolley was, oh, was one yeah. of the first, uh, probably the first beer that I really came to love here in San Diego in terms of the craft beer. And, and so, yeah, uh, I got to... Uh, got to enjoy the, uh, the, the European beers, and I, I thought that you know, I was at a crossroads in my career, yeah. and I thought, uh, let's stay here in San Diego. Uh, I, my career would have taken me out of San Diego, uh -huh. and so I figured um, uh, I'd keep, I, I'd, uh, sorry. Yeah, no, you're fine. <laughs> Background noise. No. Um, I figured That's our we janitor. Wanted, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I decided, uh, we, well, I didn't decide, my wife and I decided, and my wife, Robin, is just amazingly supportive, and she, I was a home brewer at the time, I was, a, uh, I was brewing with Quaff, a, a big home brew club here, yeah. amazingly talented brewers in that club, and I, I knew I was brewing good beers, but um, 
we made the decision, you know what, uh, I, I had started a business early in my mm -hmm. life. It didn't go anywhere, but, but I learned a lot from it. So I knew I had the entrepreneurial blood and, and we thought, you know what, this is our way of staying here in San Diego and growing roots here. Mm -hmm. So we decided to go for it, uh, took on, uh, uh, we brought in a friend of mine as a partner. He's, he's uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona, a friend of mine, uh, Kevin Malik. We cobbled together, uh, you know, our basically bootstrapped the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, got a couple of um, friends and family investors. We didn't go the, you know, big investment team route. And how anything, long ago so. was this? When did Deft This was about four years ago. Oh, my gosh. So, so you yeah. got, so we only got four years of Deft. You're winning GABF medals. You are serving really a style of beer that is underserved in this community. Agreed. Like. And you're killing it at it also, Mo. Thank this you. is awesome. And Thank you. You yeah. know, like, I would say you're also kind of flying under the radar, too. Yeah, yeah. So where is the tasting room? I've been there before, but for any of the people that don't know where it oh, is. Oh, yeah. So um, we're in Bay Park. Mm -hmm. uh, we are just off of Marina Boulevard, kind of in between, if you were to draw lines from, like, SeaWorld, Old Town, and USD up mm -hmm. on the hill. Yeah. yeah. We're kind of down there. We're very close to... Um, you know, Ballast Points, Brumart. Uh, we're we're a few blocks away from there. Basically, if you know where Tia Leo's is, go to that light, across and the then street. go across the street, going west. You'll see there's like a big like a, I think it's a big bed store or something. Yeah, yeah. You turn Floor it, it's right there. Yes, Florida yeah. Decor. Because yep. every time I go by, I sing the jingle about it. Yeah, <laughs> it is a cool tasting room. It's got a very cool patio, and San Diego's got great weather, and mm -hmm. people can just sit out and drink all your great beers in the patio and. Yeah. It's pretty cool that that neighborhood has supported you yeah. the way they have. They really, really um, have, and that's part of the reason why we chose there, because we lived right there in Bay Park, so we yeah. knew the neighborhoods. We, we knew yeah. that this concept probably could fly there. Mm -hmm. we, did, we had no idea how supportive um, yeah. our customer base would be, and especially during uh, the pandemic and the shutdowns. And we did follow all the, you know, all the guidelines and everything, which meant we were to go only for for a long period of time, and that was yeah. uh, a struggle. But it's amazing how many. Like, well, it's not just the neighborhood, but the, you're very beloved in the San Diego beer community oh, as yeah. well, just by being a nice guy and operating an, an honest business, um, and making the beers you do. Everybody Thank I talk you. to in the industry says, "Oh yeah, love Deft." Right. I know, and I can't believe it's taking us this long to have you on Beer for Breakfast. I, uh, first, of all, public oh, thank you. first of all, public apology for that, and then second public apology that I have to make for you. Um, last time I was at Deft, it was when you guys did um, Jared Rowley's beer. Oh, yeah. Yep. And you guys, it was the whole you know, pro-am coming together to make the beer, and so I brought my beautiful dog Marilyn with me, and we're sitting on the patio, and then all of a sudden, I feel Marilyn pulling on her leash, and I look over, and um, she's eating your hops. Oh, and no. I am oh, sorry. No. Oh, no. <laughs> and I grabbed her. I was like, what are you doing? Don't eat hops. And, uh -oh. and we moved, and luckily, the hot plant was okay. But Chew chewing on the plants. Yeah, I, I do good, have yeah. to apologize to no, you no that problem. my dog chewed on your hot plant at the tasting room. There's yeah, no it's, it's actually kind of uh, so... <laughs> Hop, the hop cones are actually um, not good for dogs, but the plants themselves, I, I, I believe they're, they're okay. But um, the cool thing about those plants is almost like they know that, that they grow that way. The leaves start falling off the bottom part, bottom three or four feet of the, those hop plants uh -huh. anyway. So those are... So See, you, there we go then. So if yeah, you've never no seen, damage done. <laughs> if you've never seen a hop plant in person and growing up a vine, go to Def's Tasting Room. It's really, really cool, actually. And every time I go, mm. they've like grown a little bit more. So yeah, we've got 26 plants out there. Uh, they grow kind of up, and then we train them to grow over the patio. <laughs> So, so you can awesome. actually, uh, you know, sit under, under these hops uh, that we'll, we'll eventually use then. And, and the, the, the season, our growing season there in Bay Park, apparently it's some the weird microclimate or something, <laughs> um, when everybody else harvests in September, we actually harvest in like December, January. Oh, right. So we that will actually so have. So are you wet hopping super weird, yeah. in like December, January? In January. So we, we will actually have a, probably two wet hop beers in January or February, which which is cool because we get to be the first yeah. in San Diego with, with our wet hops. Yeah. You know? Sorry, Tyson so and Tom. <laughs> <laughs> is it the first or the last? Because I think like a lot of places in Poway or whatever, like Starby, they harvest in like July or August. Yeah, right. Which is before Yakima even, which right. is normally September. Right. And so we're, it's, it's weird that, yeah. you know, we're so late, but it's been like that. I've, yeah. I've been brewing or I've been uh, growing those hops for six, seven years. Oh, wow. And, um, 
and yeah, it's been like this. That is a trip. And then in the southern hemisphere, year. it's like uh, April or May. Yeah. For the and we've got actually got a mix of northern and southern. We've got uh, yeah. we've got Southern Cross and Pacific Gem hops. Both are producing hop tones this year. So uh, we're excited. Last year they didn't. So. So oh, cool. Mo, what is this big boy that you, that I, so I'm, I'm, you guys are chatting hops, which I love, but I'm also like, <laughs> I'm, I can't have beer. this. Double so, Def Secret Stick It Alt Beer. Yep, a Stika Alt Beer. Stika Alt Beer. So Alt Beer is kind of, you know, it's a regional beer in, in the Dusseldorf, uh, in and around Dusseldorf, uh, which is a really nice malty beer. Uh, and uh, what we did is, so the, the, the story, as the story goes, under strict regulation, taxation, everything. Brewers, breweries could only brew uh, these alt beers with a specific ABV, you know, up to 5% or 6% right. or whatever. So these brewers would, um, they would accidentally throw in extra grains or maybe extra sugar to really amp it up. They'd stash that away and they'd, uh, they'd then enjoy it with their friends and family. So that became like a oh. festival beer that was kind of under the radar. Uh -huh. It's stashed and shtika is, is like the dialect. It's slang for uh, secret or stash. Yeah. And that's, uh, yeah. Shtika. <laughs> <laughs> and so this has been uh, a lot of our, our deft friends really love this beer. And uh, this and is, it's definitely one of my, it's a big ABV. beer. Whee! There's a lot of complexity in there. Uh, there really is. And the smoke is very delicate. Mm. It is malt forward. It's got a lot of nice bread, but also a little bit of toasted caramel or something yeah. going on there. Yeah. This yeah. is really awesome. Nice. Oh my gosh. Mo, I you like just like lot. expanded our minds with these three beers. This is <laughs> awesome. You. This was a very special beer for breakfast, ABB, <clears throat> at least for me, because you brought three styles of beer that we, I don't want to say we've never had on, but we've definitely never had on in this. It's know. been a while. Uh, I don't think we've. I don't know. We may have had a single. I mean, Society makes that sort of Pilsner Belgian single cross Never heard in of the one. Harlot, mm -hmm. um, which is right. a <laughs> great beer. I love that beer, too. Yeah. Um, it's been a while for these, though, for yeah, sure. Like, absolutely. I don't know if we've ever had I, we've an alt never, beer on We've the show. never had an alt beer on, so this is yeah. real. And actually, I, it's one of the few I don't German even know ale if I've styles. I've never had an alt beer. This might be my first one. I'm awesome. digging it. <laughs> I can feel it into my German roots inside of nice. my blood. Stute. <laughs> yeah, stoot. My, my ancestors are like, yeah, we're still doing it. Um, Mo, for anybody who hasn't been to Deft Brewing, where do we keep up with you? What's going on with Deft? Uh, so follow us uh, on social media at Deft Brewing, and uh, otherwise uh, www.deftbrewing.com. Yeah, uh, you just can also get your us. butts to the tasting room yeah. where it's cool and drink all the cool beers mm -hmm. he has on tap. Dog so friendly, a bunch of different beers, especially just a great way to expand your mind, expand your palate, try different food. things. And there's food, and there's a meadery. Yep, there's not yep. too far away. Lost, Lost Cause Meadery is right next to us. Billy and Susanna do amazing meads. They've won a, a trillion awards on um, uh, at yeah. the Mazer Cause. If you Cause guys haven't had meads, meads really, there, really what are you doing meads, with your so. life? Go, go. Yes. Go, go, go now. <laughs> Mo, thank you so much for joining thank us you. for yeah. for Breakfast, ABB. I'm, I'm, I'm really honored it's to It's a pleasure having you on the show. Glad yeah. you enjoyed the beers. Yes. Keep making great beers. Please yeah. do. Like I said, Deft is probably mm. one of San Diego's best kept secrets, but hopefully it will not continue yeah. to be the best kept <laughs> secret because you guys are making phenomenal beer. Thank, thank you. you so yes. much. Thank you. And uh, thank you. Please join us on Friday morning on the radio, 91.1 .1 FM. If you are in San Diego, you can stream from 91X.com or download that free app Friday morning it's beer for breakfast time 9 10 paul will join myself and marty and we are getting down on some deft brewing so <laughs> cheers to independently owned craft beer and radio in san diego cheers Yee! to that 91x